Yo, what's good everybody? If you're new, welcome to the channel. If you're a real one and you're already subscribed, welcome back. In today's video, we're going over part two from last week's video, the one light setup for beauty photos. So today we're gonna go over the retouch process, my retouch process on how I edit beauty photos. So let's get into it. We'll be using frequency separation for our retouching today. Uh, if that's something you're not familiar with, let me know down in the comments and I will do a video covering that. This is one of the images that we used from our shoot. I'll put a link in the description for you guys so you guys can use the same image if you want to follow along. And I'll also drop a link so you guys can download some of the actions that I'm using. I have a frequency separation action that I set up but I tweaked it to my settings. So I'll have that available for you guys in the description down below. So first things first, we just wanna go ahead and attack any blemishes that we have on our image. Uh, we do that using our healing tool and we're gonna be on our high frequency layer. This layer is for blemishes. This bottom layer here, this is gonna be for our tones. What we wanna do is just use this healing tool and we're gonna sample from areas that are next to the area that we're looking to clean up. By the way, I'm also using a Wacom Intuos Pro tablet. If you don't have some type of pen tablet, I recommend you get one if you're going to be doing any type of high-end retouching or anything, it just makes the job a lot more efficient. So yeah, here what we're going to do is just grab these blemishes, we're gonna knock these out. You can take as long as you want with this. You can be as tedious as you want or you can be a little bit more liberal. It's up to you, it's your style, it's your image. I try to leave the image looking as natural as possible. A good rule that I like to keep is you'll never know if a good retoucher touched the photo. So what I like to do is I'll remove stuff, but I'll also leave some details in, some freckles in here. Um, I'll leave because they just give you a authentic feel to your skin, right? You start taking everything out that's on the skin um, and the image just starts to look fake. And again, if you want that high glam look, then by any means, go ahead and retouch it. Like I said, this is, it's, it's up to you, it's your art. So it's how you want to do it. But how I go about it is I'm going to leave some of these details in here, some of the texture. I, I want this in here to make our image look as real as possible. I don't want my image to look like I retouched it. So we'll just go through here and clean this up. At some point, I'll probably speed this up and we will advance to the next section. So we're not doing this for too long. But yeah, so with your healing tool, you're just sampling from the area next to where you want to clean up. You can also just use the, uh, the regular spot healing tool in there and that will just let you go over the area that you want. But I like to control where I sample from. Everything we're doing, what this will end up being a combination of our healing tool and smoothing our tones of skin. As you can see in areas where it might be blotchy, there's some type of undertone like in this area here. Just in here, there's a little bit of blotchiness. Um, we can go in there and clean all of that up and smooth it out. 
This top layer is gonna let us retain our texture of the skin. And that bottom layer is gonna go under there and blend these tones together. So I'm just about finished with that. Edit at your discretion. Do as you please with your image. This is where we're at right now. So this just smoothed it. Now, this is where you'll start to see a lot of the real work. And so what I'm doing here is there's actually a couple different techniques. Um, I'm gonna keep my healing tool and we're just gonna go under some of those areas and smooth them. You wanna to try to keep your tool to be about the same size as the areas that you're working on. You don't wanna use a big, large brush and be down here because it's gonna sample and have your image looking crazy like that. So you wanna to try to keep your brush size close to the size of the areas that you're working on. Try to do the most of the work with this tool here. And then we'll switch and we'll go back in with the brush and uh, we'll zoom out and we'll look at the image from a little further back. And that will allow us to see some of the details that you can't see when you're zoomed all the way in like this. This lets you get all of the fine details, but we wanna make sure that we can see the image in its entirety. And so with that, we'll zoom out and we'll do a few things there too, just to clean it up. And we're already in good shape. So this is as is. I'll do another step after this, but just so we can see before and after. And as you can see, you can still see the texture in her skin. This is what we want. We want it clean and we want to preserve this texture. We don't want, I don't want a fake texture in the skin, I should say. So we'll use our soft brush. Right now we're just pulling from our light area, pushing to our dark and our dark into our light. And that's just going to give us an even blend. With these things, you have to be patient and uh, keep in mind less is more always when you're retouching. Less is always more. So you wanna turn your brush levels down. You'll see by the time we're done with using this brush tool, uh, the image is really gonna come together, but it'll still look natural. And this is what we're going for is that natural look. So within doing this, you really want to be aware of your shadow areas, your highlight areas, basically your tones and your lighting, because how the light falls on the face gives it its dimension, right? If you were to knock the highlights out here or get rid of the shadow, then we're going to lose the definition of her face structure here, as you can see. She has prominent cheekbones. Now, if I were to get rid of this shadow here and I can show you, then we lose some of that definition, right? And we don't want that. And like, we wanna show what her face actually looks like. So you have to be aware of your highlights and shadows while you're doing this. And after a while, you'll get the hang of it. You'll be able to flow through it pretty quick. It's all just training your eye and building your technique like you'll build what works for you how i'm retouching is probably not how the next person retouches it's a general technique that i've kind of molded into my own tweaked it here and there so i keep this zoomed out this far because when you're working up close that amount of detail uh, sometimes you can't see the entire image and you can work too closely in there and be making adjustments that aren't even visible to the eye, right? 
who wants to spend a ton of time in here doing things that people can't even see you know and i used to be like that i used to i gotta do this i gotta dodge and burn i gotta then you gotta do this and get every single pore and blemish and if that's your style then by any means do that but um i'm not editing for photographers or for retouchers to look at my images and critique my images that's not who we're trying to appeal to so now we're just going to smooth out I'm lightweight please with this I'll go back in and I'll, we'll touch up these eyebrows we'll liven up the eyes just a little bit more but you can still see in here just the details are lighting elements and they make the eyes pop more than it would if we just didn't have this reflector down there um, so that's why we use that that reflector not only is it adding lighting elements here in the lip under the nose you see it's lifting all of this even on the chin the jawline and under the brow in general it's adding more light under here um, but it gives you these details in the eyes that make your image pop. So a technique I found for cleaning up areas like this and uh, maintaining the integrity of what you're doing still because like I said that's the name of the game we're not looking to blow anything out I use this stamp tool right and I'll turn down to 80 or 90 opacity here and I sample just below just enough to clean So what this is doing is just moving the tone but we're still keeping the hairs right so our eyebrow our, our line still looks natural again we're not trying to make our image look fake we want our image to look real but look how much detail is still retained in the photo Right. We're going to lighten the eyes a bit and we're going to clean up hair a little bit. Merge these into a new layer. And I like to use levels. And we'll pick this up and invert our layer with Command I. And we want to use white, so we're painting on our mask. I'm going to come up to the hair and clean our edge right here. like to return back out here to see what my eye actually catches I don't have a set thing that I just do for each image I actually look at the image and uh, I move in work in the details and then I'll pop back out and just take a look at the image of uh, things that catch my eye here this is grabbing my attention and in the cheek right here. So I'll actually just use the same stamp tool that I was just using. And we're going to sample right next to it. Just move it. Just like that, just cause it, it caught my attention. That's what I'm looking for. The small things that catch my attention. These are final touches that I would make. We'll go back in with a dodge and burn layer. 
crazy because I see a lot of people with tons of layers stacked and we're doing all of this with under 10 layers. Again, this is just my technique. I like my images to look natural. And if you really go into like a Sephora, uh, Alta or anything like that, Go take a look at some of the images that you see in there, some of their advertising images and look at how they retouch their images. They don't even do this much to them. They actually leave their images very, very lightly retouched. But yeah, so with our dodge and burn, like I said, less is always more. So we bring our opacity down. My flow, I always keep around 90. I, I never work with that at 100. I never want anything 100%. I'm just gonna go in here and boost what we already got just a little bit. Hey, you're just looking for the areas that are already lit. I'm not looking to add anything that doesn't already exist. It's the same thing with your dodge and burn tools. You always want your brush to be relatively the same size as the area that you're working. So I wouldn't use a big brush to work in this area in here. Like this area here, I want the brush just to be relatively the same size. Um, I'm not gonna overdo it. To be honest, this looks good to me. So I'm probably gonna leave this here. Uh, and this will be our final image here. This is before. That's our after. I do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions where I go more in depth to this retouching process and cover all different types of styles, lighting techniques, editing, color grading, um, and managing your business. If that's something you think you guys would like, click the link down below in the description and that will take you to my website where you could sign up for that. So that's it for this video. If you guys liked it, hit the thumbs up. It'll help us get the channel up off the ground. And if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe and turn on the notifications so you know the next time we drop. And until the next time, I'll catch you guys.